record this. Oh, I wanted to hear some of your stories. <laughs> so I brought that in so I could record this conversation. You don't mind, do you? No, no, no. I don't okay, mind. good, good, uh, good. In, in fact, you know what? Uh, John, I had so much experience. See, I'm Barbara for. Um, uh, you're not recording that right now, are you? I am, I am. No, but you should wait and. and Okay, well, we were talking about the, the chicken coops like that. Right? With the farm, so. Okay, the farm. So anyway, I grew up in the farm till I was at 14 and a half years old. And my dad used to fix, uh, uh, the, exactly what you try, uh, think of about doing there, but I think his was um, probably 10 by 15 or something like that. Right. And at the night, night time, that's why, uh, oh, he used to fix a place where the chickens could lay eggs, too. Right, the coop, the inside. The, yeah, right. Right, right. So anyway, I think he had it divided. It's been a long, long time. So during the night, he used to get all the chickens in the, in the deal there and, and close the, the, get, the door. Right. Because the coyotes used to come over and try to get to them. Oh, yeah. So he even built a fence around that, uh, around that uh, chicken coop. Uh, not real close because... Once in a while, he would let the chickens uh, go out, you know. Yeah. But the coyote used to come there the night, and they would try to get it over, over that fence. Yeah, the chickens, they know where they live. They'll come back and everything. The roosters would sometimes run into the woods, but they would always come back. So yeah. I thought I was, build, I was building the thing, building the thing, and, and then the coyotes heard them, and they came in, they ate them. So I felt, I felt bad. I, would, I saw all the feathers. You know, I, I saw the feathers left over and everything. So I was yeah, so that's the reason you have to have a fence. Right. Because the, the coyotes come to it, especially at night time. Well, I wanted to ask you a question, too, about what you were telling me on the phone. You said that you'll tell me more about it. But you said that you guys had to stay at this old house. You had a house that you used for uh, storing, like, fruit or grain and stuff that you grew. And then you had to live in that house. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Can you tell us that story about how you had to go back and stay in that house that was used for uh, storage? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, let me tell you what happened here. There was a, 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 a real old house, uh -huh. and it was built out of adobe. Okay. You know, they used to make, a, you know, have you ever seen a, an adobe brick mat? Uh, I have. Right. So anyway, it was a pretty nice looking house, but the trouble is, it was real old, mm -hmm. but it was still livable. So when my mother and dad, they got married, they used to live with Uncle Frank across the river. Because that house was haunted. There was ghosts in there. Well, they never told me anything about it. But anyway, uh, my mother and dad and uh, my dad lived with my Uncle Frank for about, I don't know how many years. But when Albert, my brother, was um, 15, and Betty and Minnie, they had three kids, they came to California. Because my, my, my uh, father had two sisters that used to live in California. And they used to come home and visit each other. Well, so anyway, he got to a point and figured out because farmer, being a farmer is a lot of work. Oh yeah. So he decided to move to California and see if he could get a job, and he got a job with Canal Lumber. Now that was way back in the in, in the early twenties. So anyway, he was working there with Canal Lumber, and then the depression started hitting. So I uh, I was two years old. And uh, then we, my dad decided to go back to New Mexico. So he still owned that land out there? He had oh, to, yeah. He had to pay well, taxes on my, that? or that, that was My grandfather owned that land, 600 acres. And what happened there, <laughs> there was three brothers that came from Spain. Right. And they came there by, uh, the, when the Spaniards first started coming, they used to settle in Florida. Right. But then they went around the Gulf of Mexico and came up the Gulf of Mexico right close to where El Paso is now. Right. And, and so El Paso was a small little town, and um, those two brothers, three brothers, Cordovas, they came there and they were looking for jobs. Right. And they had, uh, they found out, somebody told them that there was a, a silver mine that had just opened in, uh, in their New Mexico. So they went back there and they got a job, all three of them. And they started working. But two of the brothers wanted to go up farther north to Santa Fe because they had to find out that the, they heard that there were some gold mines up there. And instead of just working for the silver mine, they wanted to go out there where there was gold. 
So two of the brothers left, and one of the brothers remained there in members. And then just about that time, the, the government passed a law that you could homestead so many properties if you would convert them to farms and stuff like that. So they could um, uh, apply for 10 acres of land. And, and then if you start enlarging, you can keep on adding. So that's the way they end up with all that acreage. One brother. But then... What was his name? Huh? What was his name? Oh, gee, I don't know. But Albert, I mean, uh, Albert, Robert, my nephew, he did the study about it. Right. There were three brothers, and then two of the brothers went up north, and you know what? There was no cars, and they had to go on horseback. So they stayed there in New Mexico until, on, on the, the silver mine, uh, until they got enough money to buy a horse, and uh, they, they bought a couple of horses and a mule, and they start walk, they start going up the, uh, the river, all the way up to uh, Santa Fe. And those brothers never came back. Right. They, they settled up there and they never saw each other again. Okay, so the brother that remained here, he got married and started raising a family. Where did he meet his wife? Huh? Where did he meet his wife? In there in New Mexico. She was Spanish, right? Uh, no, she was Spanish, but part Indian. Indian, right, right. Because see, way back then, when the Spaniards first came here right. to Mexico, most of that, uh, there was no women. They, they, uh, they used to come, it was mostly men. Yeah, like the military well, kind. Like when Columbus came over. Right, it's like the military it, kind of. It, it was, well, that was the military. The, 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 he wanted to travel, so the Spanish government furnished a ship. Right. And, it was, and he recruited a lot of, a lot of the pe men to come with him. Right. So when they landed in New Mexico, it was just men. Right. And even when the... When the pilgrims first came over here, it was mostly men. So what they started doing, they started marrying uh, uh, any women. And, and that's where it started mixed. That's where it started part in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my, uh, one of the Cordova started homesteading some property. So there's just one and, brother and his wife at, the, at that area? Well, probably before that, he didn't even have a wife. Right, but the other brothers went to Santa Fe, yeah, and then they, they lost touch. So at that point, there was only one brother. They uh, remained down here, and he had six. And he got to but have six hundred. Then he got married. He got yep. married, and he had uh, uh, had a son, and uh, and then he had uh, th that son had another son, and then the third was my grandfather. And what was uh, your grandfather's name? Alvino. Alvino. Like me, uh, my name is Alvin. Because, uh, but I dropped the O. I thought your first name was Frankie or Francisco. <laughs> he sure was. Let me tell you what they do. See, when, uh, when I was born there in, in Ball Heights, uh, the doctor uh, came over and delivered, the, uh, delivered me, you know, and, uh, and my mother gave it the name of Alvino. <laughs> Alvino Cordova. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be oh, there. Oh, oh, okay, for then. We'll, we'll uh, be there one minute. He's uh, telling a story on, on camera. Hey, but then we. Oh, no, well, you better turn it up because you know what? I don't want to break the flow. You got a good flow going on. You want to eat? Are you hungry? You want to eat right now? Uh, the, let's eat, then we'll come back and you go my room. All right, okay. And I'll tell you the whole All story. All right, I'll pause the camera then. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Holy Michael, thank you very much. You are welcome. So when you cut up a deer, you'll have like a bunch of different size like steaks and everything and then you hang them from like a tree you were saying and let them dry out there in the sun. Now what was that? <clears throat> After you cut up the deer, you're going to have a bunch of different steaks like different sizes, right? But they'll be like in strips you were yeah, saying, uh, right? Well, yeah, but by, um, after you kill the deer, certain parts of the deer my mother used to um, fix for different types of recipes. But uh, most of the meat, uh, we couldn't eat all that meat right away. So that's the reason she used to. Hey, thank you very much, Christopher. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Welcome. Thank you much. Uh, I'll wait a few minutes on that. Anyway, um, and, and then what's, um, what was left, she used to cut on strips. Right. And, and, and hang it up to dry. And once it dry, it lasts for a long time. See, you guys don't know, but way back then, in the, 
when I was born and up to 1939. Very few people had refrigerators. In right. New Mexico, they didn't know what, we didn't have no electricity. We used to have to have those uh, 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 lamps, you know, kerosene lamps. Right. So anyway, people don't know that, but uh, there was a lot of, um, we weren't poor, but there wasn't equipment. I mean, it wasn't, uh, they didn't, uh, the United States, they really didn't start doing a lot of things until just before the, the war, World War Two. Right. And then uh, even cars, there was a shortage of cars. And then during the war, you could not buy a new car. They were making all everything for the army, uh, trucks, you know, and and tanks and all that baloney, you see. So, but after the war, those companies, so they stopped building cars again. Right. And they, then they stopped building refrigerators, and they did a lot of different things. Before refrigerators, it, what would you do, do to keep all your stuff cold? Uh, before the refrigerators? Yeah. We used to uh, keep everything that cold. Hell no, we didn't know what cold, cold was. We'll preserve it, you know. <laughs> there was no ice or anything. Right, no ice. <laughs> anyway, you, uh, my mother used to cook stuff that uh, we would eat. It, it was what, breakfast? It was it. Right. So you didn't need a refrigerator. Right, right. We had chickens. They used to lay eggs. We used to have fresh eggs every day. But remember how you were saying how you guys would have a, a harvest, a fruit? Or uh, corn or something like that, and then you would put it into the house. Oh, we the had that, house. We had a storage house. Right. Well, uh, let me. Tell you, it's a long story. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> when I was two years old, we moved back to New Mexico. Yeah. My dad and mother, and my three brothers. I mean, uh, well, my brothers Albert and my two sisters. They were born there in New Mexico, uh -huh. and then they came to California, and while my dad was working here, that's when I was born. Right. When I was two years old, my dad lost his job, so we went back to New Mexico. Okay, so at that time, when they first came to California, about after my mother, uh, my dad and mother got married, uh, they stayed living with my uh, Uncle Frank, uh -huh. because my Uncle Frank was uh, he had a pretty nice house. And he had a few acres, not too many, mostly the fruit that he used to grow. And anyway, he used to live by himself. So my mother and dad used to live with him. And that's what they had Albert and Betty and, Mary and the, you know, the, the house there. But then when they came to California, Uncle Frank got married. So then when, my, when our family moved back to New Mexico, we didn't have no goddamn place to stay. So we stay in this house. That was haunted. Now it was, st it was still livable because it was built of those adobes I was telling you about. They used to make those adobes out of clay, and then uh, and then this side they used to make it uh, they had a, a special um, deal that they used to uh, it looked like a, that wall. They used to cover that deal that so the walls inside would look beautiful. Yeah. It was finished. I don't know what what they call that. It was a fine white powder, and they used to mix it with water, and then they, they cover the adobe. Yeah, they got one in Olvera Street, an adobe house, and it looks just like that regular yeah. wall, regular uh, dry, it's, dry it's wall. the way it was in New Mexico. Right. Okay, so we went to that, uh, when we got there to, to New Mexico, we didn't have no place to stay because, we, you know, my, my, uh, my uncle, Frank, he got married, and he was, so anyway, we didn't want to stay, so my dad decided to stay in this house. And uh, so it, it was livable. It had a nice floor and everything like that. A fireplace. And who built that house? Uh, when, huh? Who built that adobe oh, house? It was built many, many years ago. By someone in the family? Yeah. Yeah, there was three brothers who came from Spain way back in the early 1700s. Right. And, and they started homesteading some property there. And they were building houses. And there's a lot of houses in New Mexico that was built way back then, but most of them are haunted. You cannot live in them. They what? got ghosts. 